Hello and welcome back to this car modeling video tutorial series from BlenderCookie.com. My name is Jonathan Williamson and we're going to continue modeling the car here in this section to go ahead and try and finish it off. And the areas that we're going to focus on this time around is we're going to go ahead and finish off the windows. We want to do the seal around the windows. Uh, if time permits, I'd also like to go in and model the grills that you can see in here in here and then also if we switch over to the reference that we have here you also notice that there is another side panel here and a panel along the bottom that I'd also like to add in and then if time permits but probably in the next section we've also got to go in and add the the door handle all the headlights and things like that so I'm going to start out by selecting the the window mesh and let's go ahead and select the windshield as well and the back window and we're going to go ahead and hit control J to join all of those objects together there's no need for them to be to be separate and I want to make sure that I don't have any doubles and I'm going to go ahead and under the object buttons I want to go ahead and turn off the wireframe display that you can find underneath the display options and wire here that's because I want to go ahead and add a subsurf modifier to this. And one thing to note before getting too far in, you will notice that I have I am continuing along in Blender 2.5, even though before we are working in 2.49. And this is because if you remember, we switched to 2.5 to work with the wheels since curves act a little nicer in 2.5. And I want to go ahead and continue in 2.5. One, just to keep things as relevant for as long as possible, but also to avoid any errors that we may get by switching back. Because even though they are mostly cross-compatible as far as models go, you didn't, do tend to get a few bugs, particularly when going backwards, that are a pain to deal with. So I want to go ahead and continue on to 2.5 to forego any of those issues. I'm going to go ahead and add a subsurf modifier to my windows here, subdivision surface. And I'm also going to go ahead and hit T to bring up my toolbar and hit smooth shading to shade them smooth and then go into edit mode, select everything by double tapping A and hit control N to remove or to fix those normal issues that we're seeing caused by the black spots. Okay, and now before modeling any further, I'm also going to go on into the material buttons here and I want to just make sure that everything is assigned to this same material. So with the windows mesh or windows material here, I'm just going to click assign. And then I'm going to leave edit mode by hitting tab and let's just remove these other two material data blocks from that mesh so that we don't have them added needlessly. So now I'm going to go back into edit mode and let's just get started. I'm going to first go ahead and switch over to my reference here and just see what we need to do. First on the, the windshield here, let's go ahead and just start with it and make it fit very nicely within our frame. So uh, first thing I want to do is go ahead and what we're going to do to hide hide the seams on this, basically, um, since this we can see that there is a little bit of a ridge from the windshield down, or from the from the metal down to the windshield, we can actually help uh, do this by actually overlapping the metal over the windows just a little bit. And even though this isn't actually how it's constructed, it will help us avoid any uh, any holes in the mesh, like you can see right here. The other thing that we'll do to help with that is add in another perimeter edge loop right up to the edge to make sure that all of these areas are nice and sharp and aren't being rounded off. we will go ahead and slide this up a little further. So like I said, even though it's not actually constructed that way, you'll never know from a render standpoint. I'm going to go ahead and add in another edge loop right on the edge here as well. Do that. And then you'll notice that we have some serious holes in our mesh here. And so before going in on the windows, let's go back in on this mesh. And you'll notice that we forgot to add in the depth to it. And so let's do that now. And the way that I'm going to do this is I've alt right clicked on this edge loop. And I, I want to go ahead and extrude it in. But before I do that, we need to do a couple of things. First off, I want to add this, this edge loop to the selection but I don't want to extrude in any of these vertices and so what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to hit B and middle click and drag to deselect those vertices just the other two and then I'm going to do the same thing here and now what I'm well okay actually I'm going to do this in two parts I'm going to first do the bottom portion here 
because it's going to extrude in along the x-axis, whereas this one's going to extrude in along the z-axis, and then we'll merge the vertices here. So first, I want to go ahead and turn on snapping, and I want to snap to the vertex, because then we're just going to hit E to extrude, and we're going to snap to that vertice. And we're going to do it again, and snap to there, because now I can just select everything, W, remove doubles, and it will merge those vertices there. And then I can go ahead and just add in an edge loop right like that, and bring it down. And now you will notice that there's still some, some seams here, but that's okay, because we're going to add in another edge loop all the way right along there, and that will sharpen that up pretty nicely. Okay. And maybe we can go ahead and bring this in a little bit, being sure to deselect any extra edges that that may have added. And I'm going to deselect that one as well. I'm going to select the perimeter loop there. And then we can go ahead and pull everything along the Y axis, deselecting parts as we go to bring it in nice and sharp together. There we go. That'll work. So now I'm going to go back in on the top here, and you'll remember where we we extruded this in. Now I want to go ahead and select the remainder of that loop, deselect the bottom here, and deselect. Uh, we'll go ahead and deselect these areas, because then we're going to hit E to extrude, take a right down to there along the z-axis. And remember, since we have snapping on, we just have to hover over the vertice where we want to merge it, and then we'll select everything. W remove doubles. And since we have two edge loops in, in here, we need to go ahead and add in another one right along there, which will actually help sharpen things up, so that's okay. And then I can go ahead and I'm going to select these two vertices. I'm going to turn off my snapping, hit G and X to pull them along the X axis. Or actually, um, let's turn on snapping and switch over to the edge. And now we'll hit G and X and just snap everything uh, we're going to hit G and then Shift Z to exclude the Z axis, and then we can just snap it to this edge. And basically, that acts like like an edge edge slide, but different or er, along the edge, if that makes sense. Since normally, if I did an edge slide, we would see we're not able to do anything on an edge on a perimeter edge like this. But if I did it here, you could see that it would slide like this, but on the edge you can't do that. And so using the snapping along the edge actually lets you do this, basically achieve the same result. Okay, and now I want to go ahead and add in another edge loop somewhere in here to sharpen this up. But what I want to do is I really don't want to add an edge loop here and here to sharpen up this corner because I don't want to have to worry about sharp edges down here. I'd have to do a lot of smoothing out and it would just make my mesh really dense. And so what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to go ahead and select this edge here and hide it. And then I'm going to add in an edge loop here, slide it up to that corner, and an edge loop here. And then I will hit Alt-H to unhide these, switch over to face mode, merge those triangles and those triangles into a face, and then merge those triangles into a diamond of sorts, and so without disrupting my entire surface down here, I'm able to achieve a nice sharp corner. So that's a very, very effective technique for kind of sharpening up smaller areas without affecting a larger portion of the mesh. I'm going to go ahead and select these vertices here. And I want to go ahead and rotate around so I can see about the angle that they're facing and then just move them down a little bit. But I want to turn off snapping first by hitting shift tab. There we go. So we're just sharpening all these areas up. And maybe we'll go ahead and pull this area in a little. And you'll notice that there's not a lot of depth on this side. Let's go ahead and pull this loop in some more. There we go. That looks better. Okay, so that's starting to come together much nicer there than it was. Uh, I am going to go ahead and select these faces again, and I'm going to slide them out a little bit. 
And then I want to also go ahead and add some more depth. Um, yeah, let's add a little bit more depth to these. And so I'm going to select these vertices. And I'm not selecting the edge loop because, as you probably saw, there it selected all along here. And I really don't want that. I really just want to select this one portion. And then I'm going to pull it along the z-axis and pull it along the y-axis. Or actually, uh, just the z-axis, actually. Deselect those. Maybe pull these down a little bit more. Y-axis just slightly. And then I can go ahead and back in, select the windshield, pull this up, pull that in there. And I'm wanting to overlap just slightly with the the metal that's adjacent to it as you can see here so that way I hide any holes that you may otherwise see in the mesh let me go and select the hood area I'm gonna pull that up to meet that so it's lines up well you can see I then need to do the same thing here so really at this point, you know, what we're doing on the mesh is we're just going in and A, we're working on the windshield, so we're actually adding some new portions to the model, but we're also going in and lining things up better, making it more accurate, sh sharpening up seams, things like that, so that we can put together a nice polished final model. Okay, so you can see those are lining up much, much nicer now. And I want to go ahead and sharpen up these edges as well, or these seams more like. So I'll pull these in. I'm just pulling them along the x-axis so they fit very nicely with the, um, the adjacent metal. There we are. And maybe we'll slide this edge down a little bit by hitting Control E and Edge Slide, which then allows us to slide this as well. Alrighty, and we're gonna keep going now. Um, let's go ahead and move back over to the windows. So the windshield at this point is pretty much done. And just to be sure, let's go ahead and check over and move over to our other reference and look at it. And we're gonna go ahead and leave that like it is. And one thing you'll probably notice is that we don't have an area for the windshield wipers right now. And I'm even though I would like to go ahead and model that, I'm going to go ahead and leave that for the time being. We may add some... Well, no, actually, let's go ahead and do this now. What I'm going to do is let's go into the windshield wipe, windshield area, and we're going to select this bottom loop. And I want to deselect these edge vertices, and then we're going to scale these ones along the y-axis and pull them back slightly such that we're creating an area like this. And this isn't going to be completely accurate to the car, but it'll give us it'll put us in the right direction to creating that area if you wish to basically take this model from where we leave it off in this tutorial and finish it off. I'm going to rotate these around and so basically I'm creating this area in here which I'm then going to alt right click to select that loop deselect any of the extra vertices around the rest of the model by middle click and dragging, not left click and dragging like I just did and we'll deselect this edge vertice there. And then we're going to hit from the side view, Shift D, move it back a little bit, and then E to extrude, and just take it back like that. And so that'll just give us that 
that flat area with which we could create the the windshield wiper area from. The other thing that does is helps fake a little bit more depth to it because probably what you would do would give this a a, lar a black material or something like that so it would appear that there's more depth to the car if you were to see it at a certain angle. Okay, let's go ahead and move on to the side windows. So on the side windows here, I'm going to uh, first let me go ahead and remove Skype as I always seem to forget about it. And so on the side windows here, let's first go ahead and add in our edge loops like so to sharpen those up nicely. And then I want to go ahead and first off, let's slide this edge loop back just a little bit because we will need to add it, line it up with this seam. And then we will do our, our edge snapping again by snapping it to just the, uh, the Y axis. And let's just snap. Oh, I guess I'm, that's not actually going to work in this case. But we'll just hit turn off snapping and then hit G and Y, take it back along the Y axis. And then let's do the same thing here. Okay. So now that lines up better with that door. We'll go ahead and move them over just a little bit more. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to add in another edge loop here and then from the front view so that we can see the angle with which to move it. We're going to pull that up and we're going to pull these up. We just want to intersect it with the metal. Do that with each of these. Go ahead and select the bottom ones and we'll just pull them down along the Z axis a little bit. Okay, there we go. And now what I'm going to do is let's go. Well, first off, actually, we need to go ahead and pull these ones back along the X axis a little bit. And one tip for getting these as a flat surface is you see these areas that are lighter uh, and that's where the the subsurf is basically intersecting with pieces of the mesh because it's not completely flat and so if you tweak it such that you try and move it in a way to get as few of those areas and as small of those areas as possible you can tell that it's um, mostly flat so like this face here is almost perfectly flat and you're not getting those those areas and so you can kind of use those as a visual reference to see what kind of tweaking you need to do to make it smooth and one thing that you can also do is use the smooth tool but uh, be sure to exclude any of the perimeter edges since we've already got those lined up and we want them to be nice and flat so now you can see I've used the smooth tool that all fits perfectly Got just this one last one left, which I'll go ahead and just leave for the time being. Uh, you know, you don't have to get them perfect. As long as it, for the most part, appears smooth, you should be good to go. I'm just going to slide that edge right back now, just to make sure that stays nice and sharp. Okay, and now what I want to do, if you switch over to the reference, you'll notice that we've got these, you know, basically the weather stripping along here. So I want to go ahead and add those. And the way that I'm going to do that is I'm just going to select the car mesh and I'm going to select these uh, edge loops here, being sure to deselect 
all the extra ones that will be selected. I can bring up my circle brush by hitting C and using the middle mouse button just to basically paint over the ones that I don't want. <clears throat> Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and even though I don't have all of these selected, I'm going to go ahead and extrude them now. And I'm just going to hit Shift D, Alt S to scale down just the littlest bit. And then we'll hit E to extrude. Take it out a little bit along the X axis. Hit E to extrude again, and Alt S to scale it out. Maybe scale completely a little. And so you can see what we're working to do. Maybe we need to pull some of these areas out a little bit more. Let's select, go ahead and select it by hitting, uh, moving your cursor over it and tapping L. And let's go ahead and add a darker material to it. So we'll just select the dark material here, click Assign, and then we need to go and hit W, select, uh, select Inverse, and assign a lighter material to it, in which case we can just use Material 01, click Assign. And that will just help distinguish these better and particularly tell us what's what. And I'm going to actually go ahead and separate this out to a new object by selecting it and hitting P. Select it. This way I can work on it easier. Select those areas, deselect all of these, and so I'm just going to work on this basically an area at a time. We'll pull that up. We'll go over to these ones. Pull them down just a little bit. Go into edit mode. Let's pull this area of the window back just slightly. I need to move the the mirror up just or back a little along the y-axis give room for the weather stripping there we go delete this extra loop in here we don't need any duplicate loops like that Maybe add another one in right there to help with this this curve. I'm going to select these loops in the back and pull them down a little bit along the z-axis since that angle is a little sharp.
Okay, so again, you know, I'm just going through tweaking these. Make it fit nicely. Pull back the window in this area just slightly. Okay, almost done here. I'm going to pull the window back a little more there. I'm going to go ahead and set this smooth. Fix any normal issues I may have on it. Okay, now I want to go ahead and uh, first add a, a seam right here by extruding it. And then we can extrude this edge in, or this vertice, vertex, and fill that. And again, I want to assign dark material to it. And then we will pull the window back just a little bit there. Let's add a bottom edge loop onto the window. We'll do the same thing here. I'm going to scale these to zero along the Y. And then I want to go ahead and duplicate that that end. After one moment, yeah, okay, we're gonna go ahead and duplicate this in. Shift D, scale Y to negative one to flip it around, move it over, and you can see we need to raise the entire edge of this car door just so it's even with the rest of it. Just raise it just a little this bit. Like that. I'll also go ahead and pull this over. Pull this back, and then I will just extrude this all the way over there. And then I'm going to go ahead and I want to line this up. We also need to move the mirror up just a little this bit for the weather stripping. There we go. Go ahead and add in the the depth to this again. Slide that edge loop along. 
I'm going to go ahead and pull this weather stripping out along the X. Just about like that. Okay. And it would seem that oh, I forgot to to move the glass for the mirrors. There we are. Now I also need to add the the seam at the top of the weather stripping right here. So I'm going to select this edge loop. I'm going to slide it right down to the seam there. And the same thing here. And then I'm going to go ahead and just select those two loops, delete the faces, and then I will select these two vert vertices, extrude in along the X, fill that face, and fill that face. And then I need to add another edge loop in sharpen that up same thing there and then maybe we'll just pull these right in together okay now I want to go ahead and select the windows and we're going to bring these right in together And then we're going to extrude in the edges, just like that. Which means I also need to adjust the weather stripping down here. And I'll adjust the car door as well, just a little bit like that. You can see I've just got a pretty good big gap on the car door here. I'm going to slide this edge loop up just to sharpen that a little bit. And then let's go ahead and we'll just pull that in. Pull that in. Maybe add in one more loop right here so I can better get this this curve. There we go. And I think I'll add in one more loop on the door as well for the same purpose. There we go. Okay. So that's all coming together very nicely. Let's look at the back window real quick. And it's actually pretty much good to go already. Uh, maybe we'll slide this loop down. Maybe we'll extrude in one more loop there. Add another edge loop right on the bottom there. And Oh, need to scale these along the X just slightly like that. We can see we haven't extruded in this loop here. And so we can do that very easily. I'm going to sh shift tab to turn on snapping and control shift tab to switch it over to vertex. And I'm going to go up to the top here, extrude, snap it to that. And then I want to, on the bottom here, I want to snap this vertex here. 
and then maybe actually we'll go ahead and select these vertices and pull them back like that to get a better angle on that. We can also then sharpen up this. Pull that in along the X after turning off snapping. Okay, let's go ahead and do these tail lights here real quick. So I'm going to go ahead and first off I want to turn off the wireframe display and then I want to add a subsurf modifier. Select everything, shade smooth, control in, add another edge loop to the top to sharpen those up. Select everything, pull it along the y-axis a little bit and we'll pull along the x-axis. Select this loop and we want to pull it down Pull this over, and then let's just select these interior vertices on the car. Minus those. I'm going to go ahead and pull those in further. Add in another edge loop right there to sharpen that up. And then we can just take these through, intersect them. I'm going to select this whole loop. And from the side, I'm just going to add a bit more depth to it. And we'll select these, pull them back out a little bit. Same thing there. I'm going to select all these inside faces, hit W and smooth a few times. It'll help smooth all those out. And that looks pretty good. Okay, so now I want to look at um, just a couple more areas before calling it quits for the day. Um, namely, I want to look at the... Oh, well, first off, I want to add more depth here as well. That was looking pretty light. There we go. Okay, I want to go ahead and look at the, the wheel wells because currently... If you notice, now that we have a perfectly circular wheel right around them, that namely the front one in particular is not even close to being circular. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to go into edit mode, and we'll just grab these areas a piece at a time, and we're going to move them down, move this one up a little bit, move this up. And so we just want to bring it all in to be equal distance away from the wheel. And so in this case, we're looking at, um, you know, about about a quarter of a of, of a blender unit, and you know this is real real easy work, real quick, but definitely helps immensely. And since this surface is relatively flat, we don't need to worry about disrupting it too much. I'm going to slide this loop along there, and the same thing here, just to uh, even out this spacing a little bit.
Okay, that's already looking much, much better. Okay, I'm going to switch over to my reference again real quick and just take a look at this. And that all looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and shoot over to, or we've got just a little bit more we need to do right here. And this is the edge that's giving me trouble now. So I'm going to edge slide, slide that down, and that'll help get rid of that little angle that we were seeing there. There we go. And there's maybe a little bit more right here. Okay, that looks much better. Enough that we'll go ahead and leave it for the time being after doing this one last right there. Okay, let's go ahead and look at the back one. And I want to do the same thing. So this one is actually much, much closer, but still not ideal. One thing that you'll notice is that it's too large. And so let's just take these areas one at a time and we'll slide them in closer to the wheel. Locking to individual axes when we can. even up that angle. I was taking a weird turn. And we're going to bring them closer still. to do some some fine work in here to round these out almost there you can see why I think I've mentioned this before but one of the reasons that I don't do car modeling is at least for me I do um, I like to keep very organic flowing models uh, I like to model the same way that I draw and that is very very sketchy and flowing uh, starting out and so you know, being constrained to all of these exact hard edges, well, of course, it's a good exercise. It's not my preferred working method. Uh, that's not to say that I don't enjoy hard body modeling, but it is it is very restrictive of what you can do in terms of playing with the form. And of course, you know that's not that's not a hundred percent true, but for a large part of it. It definitely has an impact. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hit, turn on my snap again to vertex, and I'm going to extrude in and snap to each one of these areas. And you will notice that I, in these areas, I deselected these portions because I can see that I need to then go ahead and extrude in these edges, which can be kind of troublesome. And same thing here. And the reason that it's troublesome is just because I have this this flowing angle back here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to try and avoid some of that. And I'm just going to extrude in part of this because you're never actually going to see it. And so I'm going to go ahead and extrude in first this edge. And we'll snap it to there. 
and then I'm going to snap this vertice there, and then we'll go ahead and extrude these again. Snap, and then along the x-axis, snap that just so that they're even again, and snap that, and then we can select W, remove doubles, and control N. And then I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm first going to fill this space and fill this space. And then I'm going to select these edges, hit E, or these three, E, X, select there, deselect that vertice, grab X, snap there, remove doubles, control N, and there we go. So that way I don't have to extrude all of this back, which you're never actually going to see, but I still get all of these edges connected very nicely. So I'm going to add in more depth there by selecting that portion of it, and then I'm going to deselect this portion, and deselect all of this in here, and all of this in here, and then I'm just going to take that back, turn it off snapping along the y-axis, turn off that vertex, these back along the x-axis, and there we go. You can see I need to move this back again. And we'll fix that, fix that. I want to bring these in. Scale those to zero along the X. And we're going to add in a edge loop there. Sharpen that up. Pull these areas in this back just a little bit. Sharpen that up a little bit. I'm going to add in a... Uh, no, I don't want to do that. That's adding in a little too much. I'm going to select that edge loop that I added and deselect it down here. And then I want to just hit Control e and Edge Slide to slide it along, since you were noticing that we were getting some pinching in there that we don't want. You can see I'm getting a little bit of some bulging in the windows there. And so maybe we'll just select these areas, pull them back along the X a little. There we go. Okay, so we're making some real good progress. And I think we're going to go ahead and call it quits for the day. That leaves just one final section for modeling. Uh, I know that this has been, you know, it's been a long process. But we've got, in this final section, we will go through, add in these areas here, we'll do the grills in here, the bottom plate here, uh, do any final tweaking that we have, we'll do the headlights, and then after that, we're going to follow it up with one more section, if all goes to plan, on rendering this with good car paint shader and things like that. So, again, hope this was helpful, and I will see you again soon in part 8. Thanks again for watching.